Hi everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for SimonSaysStamp.com and today I'm going to show you a puddle pour which is fluid acrylic pouring. I'm starting off with an 8x8 canvas and I'm using just regular white paint to edge around the corners and those edges. I'll be getting the sides as well and this helps to have the paint pour over the sides without leaving any blank canvas marks. I have found that if I don't do this some of the paint doesn't adhere to the canvas when I'm all done and there's no way to fix it. This is just a little quick tip on how to prepare your canvas before you pour. On the back of my canvas I have added some push pins to each of the corners and this helps the canvas sit up off my surface. I want my painting to look like an ocean so I have chosen some cool colors from the color wheel and those are on the upper right. The paints I'm using are a mixture of Dilutions and also Tim Holtz Distress Paints. This first color is Periwinkle and this is a Dilutions paint. I'll add a good amount in the bottom of my cup and then I'll add some of the Indigo Blue Go Flow into the cup and I'm just going to cover the paint with the Go Flow so I'll add enough just until I can't see the paint anymore. Once I have that in the cup I'll mix this in really well before I move on to adding water. I keep my water in a squirt bottle and I'll squirt in a little bit at a time and I'll be stirring this until it's about a buttermilk consistency. Stirring the paint up really well between any of the additives is really important so that you know that you have a really good mixture. I'd say that mixing your paints is the most important step and it's also the most time consuming. Next I'm going to mix up some Mode Lawn Distress Paint and I have my other colors too. I'll do them the same as I do this Mode Lawn. So it's really easy. I'm just going to open the cap. You can use either the paints that have the dauber top or the flip cap. Um, I'm just going to open this up and pour what I have left into the bottom of the cup. The Distress paints are a little bit thinner than the Dilutions paints, so I won't need as much of the Go Flow. So I'll just add a little bit to the top, but I can still see the color around the edges. Once I have that into the cup, I'll mix this well. And if need be, I can add a little bit of water until I have that same consistency of buttermilk. I'm getting ready to start my puddles. I've also mixed up some white paint, which will be most dominant on this canvas. I uh, mix everything up. I'll stir them up a bit before I go to pour. So I will start with this periwinkle and just pour some small puddles onto the canvas. I'll put about three of these spots down to get started, and then I'll start adding more colors. And since I'm using colors that are in the same color family, I don't need to worry about what colors sit next to each other because they'll blend really well since they all have a blue base. I'll be alternating my colors until I've used up most of my paint. I'll also pour some white in the center. So there's no rhyme or reason on where you should put your puddles. I'm just adding paint so that I have a good configuration of the colors. I can also see that I'm already getting some action with my paint. Some of the edges are getting a little bit rough and those are creating cells, which is where the one paint sits over the other and the other paint color tries to come up from below. Since I'm using a deeper canvas, it's a one and a half inch edge canvas, I'm gonna make sure that I have plenty of paint on the top so that it will run over the sides once I go to move this around. I am gonna add a little bit more of my navy and I'll put some at the top just to fill in a little bit and I'm going to run my finger through and form an S and this really moves the paint around. I'm ready to move this around and I've used my tray below me and now I'm just tilting the canvas and letting that paint push off to the sides. You can see that I'm already starting to get really good cells and action with these paints and I'm sorry that my camera is focusing on my table rather than the canvas but you can get an idea of how I can start to move this around and get more jagged edges. I like this technique a little bit better than a dirty pour because I have a little bit more control as to where the colors sit on the canvas or where they sit next to each other. And definitely using colors that are in the same family like the blues or the cool colors, I know that I'm not going to get any muddy areas or any unappealing colors. I'll have you focus on how much of this canvas is white and how it will change. I have a little bit of a time lapse that I'll show you in a few minutes so that you can see the difference. I am picking up some of the paint that's on my surface. I have a plastic sheet that's covering my table. and I'm just picking up some of the paint making sure that I have the edges covered with my fingers. 
So over time, the white tends to drop back closer to the canvas because it has more pigment, so it's a little bit heavier than the other colors. I was able to achieve nice seafoam looking areas on this canvas without any troubles and without knowing that it would happen. So these are all a total surprise when you go to do them. I hope I've given you some inspiration in using some Delusions and Tim Holtz Distress Paints uh, along with Indigo Blue Go Flow Pouring Medium to create a really fun effect on your canvases. And as always, thanks so much for watching.